Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm more than happy to welcome you on my session. Um, my name is Miro Michalicka, and uh, currently I'm working on at Rappers. I have more than five years experience with uh, on web development in general, and uh, with Drupal, I'm working for more than three years. I'm also a board member of Slovak Drupal Association. Uh, so what we are going to talk about uh, in this presentation. Uh, in the beginning, I will talk a little about API designing best practices. Uh, then I will tell what decoupling is and uh, how we can use it in Drupal 7 and in Drupal 8. And uh, in the end of my presentation, I will get uh, to my hobby project uh, where I use Drupal 8 and uh, Internet of Things. Okay, so let's start with uh, API best practices. Um, th the first is documentation because uh, if you don't have your API well documented, uh, nobody will use it. Uh, today, uh, tools like Apiary or uh, APGen, I think, uh, are quite common and uh, you can easily generate uh, from your uh, programmed uh, API uh, documentation for it. The, the other point is stability and consistency. Um, if you are, if you have, a, have ever used uh, Facebook API, you probably know it's not, uh, where it's not very consistent. It's changing constantly and uh, it's not helping developer experience. Um, so uh, also the consistency, you, should, you shouldn't have uh, multiple um, endpoints uh, for one resource and etc. Um, the other point is flexibility, uh, because when you are designing API, which should be used by uh, front-enders as well as back-end people, uh, you probably need to um, expose data in multiple formats, not only JSON for front-end usage, but it should be helpful for uh, backend uh, integrations to have XML or uh, some other format. Then security. Uh, the security is probably the only of these uh, five points uh, which uh, Drupal um, accomplished quite successfully. Um, security is quite common. Uh, you can use uh, mostly common um, token authentication, so you have token uh, generated for user or for your, your application and you are sending it in your header. Uh, then you can use, I don't know, HTTP authentication or digest authentications. Mm. The last point, ease of adoption, is quite a summary of the previous points because uh, if you don't have an, any of these, uh, probably your API wouldn't be very helpful for developers. Uh, let's move to decoupling. Uh, what decoupling mean? Uh, someone should imagine it as this, like headless Drupal. Uh, but what it really is, uh, you may imagine it as uh, Drupal in the middle, then some application requesting data uh, from it. Uh, it also uh, don't have to be only one-way communication um, between Drupal and these applications. This application can also write to Drupal and these applications can also communicate with each other. Um, so what are some pros and cons of decoupling? Uh, pros, you will get a flexible front-end. Uh, so your front-enders will be happy because they can use uh, up-to-date technologies. Uh, with Drupal 7, uh, there, were, uh, there was quite old jQuery. In Drupal 8, it's uh, moving forward. You can use uh, Modernizer and uh, all these cool uh, front-end libraries. Uh, the other pros is also uh, mm, that you can solve lack of Drupal specialists. Um, because there, is, there isn't a lot of uh, front-enders who 
are willing to work with Drupal front-end. Uh, so you can uh, easily solve this issue. Uh, as I showed in previous screen, uh, you can use multi-vendor multi uh, backend. Uh, so you can display uh, data from multiple application in our uh, one presentation application for end user. And uh, the last point is uh, that you can uh, still use strength of uh, Drupal backend and uh, more, more importantly also Drupal back office if you design your decoupled application quite well. Um, the cons are that uh, you will lose some Drupal capabilities. So I'm speaking mostly about some adjustments for um, disabled people. You know there are some of uh, these wire attacks for uh, screen readers and these things. Uh, so you will probably need to program this. Um, you will also have to make multiple uh, requests for, for one resource because, uh, or for resources on the page um, because you basically have multiple elements on the page and uh, you need to request for almost each of them but uh, this don't have to be issue uh, with HTTP2 protocol. And uh, the last con is uh, grow of team because you will need um, more specialists, you will need uh, Drupal specialist, then you will probably need some integration specialist, and uh, lastly you will need some um, front-end specialist. Uh, what solution for this, uh, for some of these cons? Uh, you don't have to make a full decoupling way. Uh, you can use uh, something called uh, Big Pipe. I think there is presentation about it right now. It's a kind of uh, caching mechanism where you uh, first load uh, cached page elements like headers and static products and then you are dynamically loading uh, mm, personalized content of the page. Uh, now let's have a quick look on uh, Drupal 7 decoupling capabilities. Uh, there are basically three modules for this. Uh, there is RESTful Web Services module, uh, which is uh, basically base of uh, Drupal 8 REST module, so you can uh, use it and easily migrate to Drupal 8 then. Uh, it's partially OOP, uh, but it doesn't provide versionable API. Uh, I feel that uh, versioning of API is one of the most important things um, because uh, you might need uh, more versions uh, of, your, of your data. Uh, the other module is um, services module. Uh, this is probably the most common solution in Drupal 7. Uh, the good thing about uh, this module is uh, that it has uh, active Drupal 8 branch, uh, so you will probably know how to use it uh, if you were using it uh, in Drupal 7. It also uh, provides uh, some capabilities of version, versionable APIs, um, but it's uh, written uh, fully in procedural way. But if we are looking on it uh, in Drupal 7 context, it, uh, don't have to be uh, con. Um, the last module I found uh, is probably the best one. I didn't have found, I didn't find any uh, cons of it. Uh, it's fully OOP, it provides a uh, versionable API. So we should be really, really happy about this module. Uh, with Drupal 8, uh, there were quite changes. In, uh, regarding REST. Uh, REST is now in core. There are, I think, four modules uh, providing uh, REST capabilities. Uh, but, uh, there is always but, uh, even if we have core, uh, REST in core, it doesn't provide versionable API and there is about 60 issues in backlog and uh, some of the issues are quite important also for working with this 
uh, modules. Uh, so in Drupal 8, you have uh, the REST module as basic for providing endpoints, and then you have uh, REST output from views. Integration, there are some other modules for different uh, formats than JSON, like for XML and, uh, and other. Um, some people try to make it better, uh, so RESTful module is also for Drupal 8, but uh, it hasn't been developed for quite a long time. I think it's for one and a half year now. Um, but some of you might think that uh, it's not necessary if uh, we have REST in core. Okay, uh, now let's get to Internet of Things. Uh, so, what is Internet of Things? Uh, Internet of Things is uh, basically a network of some physical object, which, uh, which have some uh, sensor, software, and uh, network connection, and uh, they can collect and exchange data. Maybe it's for someone of you this. Uh, for me, when I was starting my hobby project, uh, I came with idea uh, that you should have um, uh, Drupal marketplace or normal e-commerce solution where you buy products and then you come to this smart box uh, which is run on uh, Drupal 8 as well and you pick the data or uh, pick the product you ordered. Uh, I started this like half a year ago. Uh, it was time when uh, Raspberry uh, announced uh, the five pound uh, model and uh, I was quite cu curious uh, if Drupal will be able to run on this. Uh, it seems that uh, it should be possible but uh, because on this five dollar uh, model there are there is a network connection by default, uh, I chose uh, the more advanced model, uh, but I will get uh, to the hardware part. Uh, so what were challenges? Uh, first, uh, these were the biggest challenges. The first is authentication, then uh, I have to overwrite Drupal REST in core, and uh, the last one was uh, hardware and uh, issues connection to hardware. So the first uh, is authentication. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you probably don't want uh, everybody to access your data uh, because you are storing um, personal information. Uh, so, and uh, also when you come to these um, pickup terminals, you don't want to type your email address and your password if you have uh, two-phase authentication, uh, you need to write also some PIN code there, so it wouldn't be very user-friendly. Uh, so I picked uh, um, phone, and phone number and uh, PIN authentication. Uh, this is quite common in, in Slovakia, uh, where we have s some solutions running uh, this way. Uh, for this, I uh, need to write uh, my own authentication provider. Uh, it's quite simple task because you can generate all this code with uh, Drupal console. And uh, you need to implement uh, these two methods. The first method applies, uh, which basically, very basically describe uh, if your authentication provider should be applied for this request. And uh, the other is uh, authenticate method, where you uh, find out if user uh, if uh, user is um, authenticate to access the data. Uh, so basically, uh, in my case, I I get a number from header, I get pin from header if uh, they are in header. Um, HTTP header, uh, I apply this authentication provider 
and uh, then I um, find out if user uh, entered this data correctly. Okay, the other challenge was uh, Drupal REST. Uh, as I said that uh, you have something in the core, um, there is uh, also views REST output in the core, uh, but as I said uh, before, you don't have versioned API. Um, this was quite a big problem because um, you are developing the application constantly, you need to do some changes and uh, you probably don't want to shut down all, all your subscribers of the API. Um, so uh, I created uh, some own REST endpoints. Uh, part of them were created in the views where you can pick uh, fields you want, uh, apply filter criteria for them, like basically you are creating normal view display. Um, what's the problem is that uh, uh, you can't set uh, any access uh, control. Uh, you need to override it in the code, uh, add for the root um, some requirements and then set it back. Um, it should look something like this. Uh, there is issue for it and it needs work, so if you will go to sprint after this, you should work also on this. Okay, uh, let's get to uh, custom endpoints. You can again easily generate it. It will generate uh, some kind of this code. Uh, if you generate for multiple request types, they will, they will be here and uh, you will have a separate method for each uh, request type. So if you choose uh, get, post, delete, uh, you will have three methods uh, in this class and uh, you will just put your uh, custom logic inside. Uh, after you create the, those, uh, you need to enable these uh, endpoints. Uh, you can do it uh, via code uh, in YAML file uh, where you type uh, resource name, then uh, these uh, request types and uh, you name which, uh, which formats are supported and uh, which authentication is supported for, for these uh, formats. Or, or you can do it uh, using REST UI module where you basically get a list of uh, resources and uh, then you just uh, check what you want to, uh, what do, what do you want to uh, support. And the last uh, challenge was hardware. As I mentioned earlier, this project started when uh, on the Raspberry uh, $5, uh, $5 mod uh, model was released. Uh, I picked uh, the stronger one. This is a uh, B plus model, I think. Uh, I uh, basically, you can install uh, standard, uh, almost standard uh, Debian on it and uh, then install full LAMP stack on it. I think uh, there are better solutions for this. For example, some Docker containers optimized for this, or there is uh, an Ansible script uh, which is able to install all for you. Uh, but this was just a hobby project, so I didn't spend too much time on the hardware uh, part. Uh, you may see that uh, it's just Drupal on one way, Drupal on the other way, uh, communicating. Uh, and there are basically no sensors, but I think that uh, you can, uh, in this case, you can fetch uh, some data. Uh, for example, when was the ki some kind of project picked up 
and uh, then e-commerce uh, can use this data for uh, stock. Uh. Okay, so uh, in the end, what, what are lessons learned from this project? Uh, I think that uh, decoupling with Internet of Things is quite viable concept. And uh, the other things, uh, thing I learned is that uh, Drupal REST uh, needs uh, quite a lot of improvements to be useful. Um, so if you are going to sprint, you can sprint on some REST issues as well. Uh, thank you for your attention and do you have any questions? So the question was about uh, BigPipe and uh, front-end frameworks. Uh, I, I'm not really sure if, uh, if it is something uh, outside Drupal world because this is a solution that you can use uh, Drupal 8 uh, without any front, like front-end frameworks, do the decoupling and uh, still will get uh, some of benefits of decoupling. I used the uh, core as module and custom endpoint. Ah, okay. <coughs> okay, so if there are no other questions, thank you and uh, give me feedback, please.